Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The former unified champion Andy Ruiz Jr. has announced a big announcement is coming soon. So a pre-announcement. So that's likely to be for his next fight, which he has signaled is likely to be an August opponent at TBA. But he said he wanted a tune-up before he would consider facing Luis Ortiz. These were some statements he made a few days ago. But Mike Coppinger of The Athletic, he has stated on his Twitter feed, sources, Andy Ruiz Jr.'s ring return is being planned for August. Two names being discussed for his opponent, Adam Kovnatsky, who fights Robert Hellenius on Saturday on Fox, if he wins as expected. The other option under discussion for the former heavyweight champ Chris Ariola. Of the two fights, there is one that I clearly have a preference for, and I think many heavyweight fans would also. Ruiz and Kovnatsky, that would be a very good tear-up. Similar styles, similar body types, and it would be a come-forward fight, a slugfest of epic proportions. I think the Areola fight, that would be a similar sort of matchup. It would mirror the Areola and Kovnatsky fight from August 2019 to some extent, except that Andy Ruiz Jr. is much fresher than Chris Areola. And overall, at this point, a much better fighter. And that could be a real risk to Adam Kovnatsky if he took that fight with Andy Ruiz Jr. should he beat Robert Hellenius. But that is a fight that I do hope they make, Kovnatsky and Ruiz, but I would be more expecting it will end up being Ruiz and Areola. I think Andy Ruiz Jr. wants to, I don't want to say ease back into things, but he's indicated he wants a tune-up in August. And of the two, Chris Areola is more of a tune-up than Adam Kovnatsky, if you see what I mean. But that's not to say that Areola wouldn't come to fight and throw a lot of punches as he did against Adam Kovnatsky. But yeah, Andy Ruiz Jr. indicating a big announcement coming soon. Hopefully it's the better of the two names. The Nevada State Athletic Commission has confirmed the gate for Wilder Fury 2 was the biggest since the Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield rematch in 1999, generating $16.9 million from 15,210 tickets sold. Only 84 complimentary tickets were given away. And in terms of the Lewis and Holyfield fight, that drew $16.8 million on 17,000 tickets sold. And Wilder Fury 2, also the seventh highest biggest gate in Nevada history. The fights ahead of it all involved either Floyd Mayweather or Canelo Alvarez. The WBA has confirmed on its website that Don King has won the purse bid for a Manuel Char and Trevor Bryan fight for $2 million. So see here on screen, this is the statement. So a day or so ago, Manuel Char came out and said Don King had won the purse bid, but details were threadbare. Now the release on the website says uh, Don King Productions won the purse bid to promote the World Boxing Association heavyweight title fight between Syria's Mahmoud Char and America's Trevor Bryan that took place on Monday morning at the organization's offices in Panama City and was directed by the Panamanian Ariel Fingo. Don King Productions offered $2 million, while Global Management offered $1,020,000. The minimum amount offer for this division is $1 million. Antonio Gonzalez, who represented Don King Productions, showed all the documents in order and the proposed dates and places for the confrontation. The purse distribution will be 75% for the champion Cha and 25% for the interim Brian. I guess just on that before I go on, I would have thought, because they're both considered champions, wouldn't it be a 50-50 split or maybe 60-40? 25% to Brian seems a, a, a little bit low, but um, anyway, I'll continue. The first option is Las Vegas or New York on May 23rd. The second is Kinshasa, Congo on May 30, while the third possibility would be in Qatar or Saudi Arabia also on May 30. Once the bidding has taken place, the winning promoter will have to submit the contracts stipulating the date and site of the fight duly signed by both fighters within 20 days, which means that the document must be submitted to the WBA office by March 22nd. 
So the purse bid held and won by Don King, $2 million, Char getting $1.5 million of that. But uh, yeah, still a few things to be sorted out here because as you would have just noted then, a number of venues and dates been considered in just 20 days to wrap this up. Remembering that Char and Brian were set to fight in 2019, but it sort of fell over and went very quiet and we never really heard what went on there. So with just 20 days to get this over the line and actually organized, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't have a huge amount of confidence given that this has fallen over before, but hopefully they do get it done because it'd be good to see a rationalization of these uh, titles, the regular and the interim. There's no need for an interim champion. The WBA has four current heavyweight champions or four belts for champions in that division, which is madness. So hopefully this happens and maybe we'll get to see these two fight guys who haven't fought in considerable time. Char inactive since 2017, Brian inactive since 2018. Let's hope they get it done because this needs to get done for the heavyweight division to start moving on. The French heavyweight and former Olympic gold medalist Tony Yoka has posted again he will be fighting on March the 14th in New York. So in recent weeks, there's been a lot of talk about him signing a deal with top rank and that it was in the final stages. He has not been announced as a top rank fighter as yet. But when you do check box rec for the date that he's mentioned, March 14th, that would be a card headlined by Shakur Stevenson. So hopefully um, they announce that soon. Maybe they're waiting on an opponent to be confirmed before announcing Yoka has joined top rank and being able to say, and he will be fighting on March the 14th versus Fighter A. It's been confirmed that the British heavyweight Nathan Gorman has been added to the Josh Taylor card, which is on May the 2nd in Scotland, Taylor facing his mandatory challenger Kong Song. So Nathan Gorman, no opponent yet, but good to see him back in the mix. Beaten convincingly by Daniel Dubois mid-2019, hasn't been cited since. So this is him coming back. And you see here with the social media post, no actual statement to accompany the promo poster. But Nathan Gorman, good to see him back. And he can still be in some good fights in the heavyweight division. But maybe his level in terms of how far he can go, his ceiling, we've got an indication of that. But you can't write someone off after one loss completely. Nathan Gorman can try to come again. Meanwhile, another heavyweight coming off a loss is Huey Fury. He will be returning to the ring this weekend. He will be facing Pavel Sauer. So this will be an interesting test for Huey Fury, given some of the guys that have also fought Sauer in the past year or two. Jermaine Franklin, the American heavyweight who's undefeated being among them, he got a unanimous decision against Sauer, dropping him a couple of times. And Philip Hergovich faced Sauer, I believe, in a second fight and knocked him out in a round. So what can Huey Fury do? do against Sauer, who is a high-level journeyman. This is Fury's first fight since losing a decision to Alexander Povetkin in 2019. A lot of people will be looking out to see what the 25-year-old can do different. He's been saying that he's uh, not injured anymore, has revealed that he had some right-hand problems, effectively couldn't throw the right hand. Although, if you do look at some recent fights, that seems to be one of the few punches that he has been relying on. So if Huey Fury at 25 is now healthy, and can build on a couple of wins before stepping back to world level, what can he do? Right now, his stock is low with fans given some of his recent performances and some of the what appear to be excuses. And just rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video, a couple of up-and-coming heavyweights have fights this weekend. Prospect Zan Kusubutsky, he is 12-0 currently. He's coming off a win back in November 2019 against Argon Skamichi. He is going to be fighting in Dubai this weekend, opponent TBA. And New Zealand prospect Patrick Mylata will have his fifth professional fight. He's promoted by Epic Sports and Entertainment, the company that co-promotes Kubrat Pulev. So he is fighting a guy called Vaughn Parham, and that will be in Irving in the United States. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.